In this microcap tutorial, we're going to investigate AC analysis and transient simulation on a DC level shifter. A DC level shifter is a circuit that is used to shift the DC level of an AC signal from one level to another. In this example, our signal source, Vsig, is going to be a 1 volt 10 kilohertz signal source whose offset voltage is 0 volts. Since VA is the peak magnitude of the signal, this means that the signal will go from minus 1 volt to plus 1 volt. This type of a shifter circuit would be used, for example, with a microcontroller that's operating off of a single-ended plus 5 volt supply. Uh, the input of this microcontroller needs to be within 0 to 5 volts, so we would need to shift this DC level from 0 volts to, for example, 2.5 volts. The circuit is shown here. Essentially, it consists of two resistors and a capacitor. The two resistors are equal, meaning the midpoint of the signal is going to be half of the supply voltage of 5 volts, so it's going to be at 2.5 volts. And C1 and the combination of R1 and R2 makes a high-pass filter. Let's first verify that with an AC analysis. We'll run this from 100 Hz to 10 kHz and we'll plot the output node as well as the input node. Going back to the circuit, note that the input node is defined as the input to the capacitor, whereas the signal source itself is assumed in this case to have a 50 ohm signal source resistance. Hence, V in is going to be less than V signal. And we can see that as the capacitor's impedance drops from infinity down towards zero as the frequency goes higher, V in, the voltage at the input node, is reduced by a certain amount. Likewise, when we look at the output voltage, the output voltage signal magnitude increases with frequency until we reach a 3 dB cutoff frequency. The 3 dB cutoff frequency, so looking at this, the uh, at about 10 kilohertz, the signal magnitude is roughly minus 700 milli dB. So let's look at minus 3.7 dB. That is at roughly 300 hertz, which is what we would have calculated using a simple hand calculation. The high pass equivalent would be R1 in parallel with R2 in series with the capacitor C1. Now let's look at the transient simulation of this circuit. We have a 10 kilohertz signal, so to get 10 periods, we can do a 1 millisecond simulation. Note that I intentionally set the y-axis range from minus 1 volt to plus 6 volts with the 1 volt step. And I'm going to plot both V in and V out. As you can see, the input voltage is slightly attenuated due to the 50 ohm signal source resistance, and it goes from almost minus 1.1 volt to plus 1.1 volt. In fact, let's look at those values. I right-click or left-click on these boxes to, to set my two cursors. Let's put both left and right cursors on the red line, which is our input signal. And it goes from about minus 900 millivolts to plus 900 millivolts. I can use the left and right shift keys to move the left uh, mouse cursor. And if I hit the shift key and then use the arrows, I would end up moving the right mouse cursor. Going back to our input signal, the equivalent voltages are essentially at 3.4 volts almost and plus 1.6 volts. If you notice, the magnitude of the signal is essentially the same. You can see both curves down here. This was with a simple voltage divider. What would happen if you were to disable R2? So let's click on R2 disable it by unchecking the enabled box, click OK, and now let's run the transient analysis again. Notice that this time the output signal is actually going from almost plus 4 volts to plus 6 volts. If we go to put the cursor on it again, we'll see that it's about 4.05 volts to about 5.95 volts. Keep in mind the supply voltage in the circuit was 5 volts because of the capacitor and that we have an AC signal. The voltage at the output node actually went above the supply voltage. This can happen during transient characteristics and it would be important to make sure that you didn't damage your microcontroller A to D converter input for example. 
So pay attention when you're designing such circuits.